that I'm one of the luckiest poor people I know. I'm not trying to be like Pollyanna or, uh, what is it, like plucky or something like that. I'm really not. If you're going to be poor, you should have had some of the advantages that I've had. Oh yeah, I was raised middle class, <clears throat> maybe even upper middle class. Actually, although both of my parents came from um, lowly backgrounds, so I don't think they really knew how to exploit the f fact that um, they had what they had, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not saying they were wasteful or anything like or anything like that. One of those stereotypes about low-income people pissing away money as soon as they get it. It's nothing like that. Um, I just mean I don't think they knew how to use what they had very efficiently. Um, but I was my point is that I was raised with some of the accoutrement of middle class or upper middle class status, a good education, a decent vocabulary, exposure to a lot of different stimuli, even other cultures. We used to go on camping trips to like Arizona and stuff, so I knew what Native American people were like. Um, well, I, probably when I was a kid, I knew more about Navajo and Hopi people. There's a child, look, two children. We bred, yay! Um, anyway, I probably knew more about, um, Native American people of the Southwest as a child than most of the adults that I know around me who are actually living in the Southwest. And I was from California, so there's no real reason why I should know any more than they do, you know? Anyway, um, so if you're going to be poor... Do it by having been raised upper middle class or middle class. An appreciation for uh, classical literature and art and music and so on. And um, with some life experience behind you. Look at the babies playing. Oh, For me, yes. Poverty is definitely a hardship. There, I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard to be poor. It's really hard, like having to pull my own teeth because I can't afford dental care, living without running water. So I've noticed that with the playing of this game, for instance, that I know that things should be collected, like all those little bricks that I was putting away earlier. Those are moss stone. I was out exploring and I came across a jungle temple and part of what it's made out of is moss stone. And moss stone is a, oops, I forgot put my books away. Moss stone is a pretty rare um, thing to find. It only happens in, I think, three places. A stronghold, which is almost impossible place to find. But this particular game, I happen to have one. I happen to have spawned right at a stronghold. And then dungeons, which are like under this village. There's a dungeon that has a a monster spawner for zombies and I turned my monsters off and I found the spawner and I um, took it apart and kept the moss stone and then temples is the only other place to find these these really rare stones so I keep them because I consider them like a trophy something I got for um, having worked hard a lot of people just shine them on and walk away because they're so busy trying to kill the dragon at the end of the game i'm not interested in killing the dragon in fact i have the regular monsters off except when i need stuff that monsters have and i can't get any place else oh i see the difference in attitude like squandering resources i see the difference in attitude between myself and other people a lot and it's because i've learned to um I guess appreciate every opportunity that comes around because you know you just don't know if it's going to come again but I even see that among poor people and I think it has to do with first of all 
we're not taught personal responsibility in schools and by this I mean not just things like critical thinking but we're not taught parenting skills we're not talking personal budgeting and personal financing we're not taught that in schools and I think that's intentional I think we're deliberately um, allowed to grow up being able to be victimized because we don't know how to handle our finances and stuff I'll give you an example I'm not saying that I'm better than anybody else because I'm saying this okay it's just a fact that I've noticed I have ninety dollars a month food stamps that's all I have to spend on food and I'm so careful with that what I spend on it sugar cane can be used to make sugar um, it can also I use it for lamps see this is kind of like using it as a lamp you put a light by it and it glows uh, and it can be seen from a great distance but it only grows three things tall so uh, you have to kind of I spread it out in a long line when I can because um, you can't make it go tall like I make towers too but. Oh, $90 a month doesn't sound like enough to live on and it's not even designed to be enough to live on really the government never expected me to actually only eat ninety dollars worth of food a month but see I don't buy prepared meals hardly ever do I buy prepared meals I even felt guilty because I bought some frozen fish fillets because I was having a hankering for fried fish and my kitchen is very small so making things like batter for fried fish is problematic because it's hard to wash dishes and stuff so I went and bought me a bag of uh, fish fillets oops there's some sugar cane and brought them home and put them in my fry daddy and fried them but I hardly ever even do that so things like I'll go in the store and I'll see sale lunchables only two dollars and I look and it's like three little pieces of bologna a little piece of cheese and a couple of crackers it's not worth three dollars for three dollars I could buy damn near a whole sack of groceries I'm collecting sand so I can um, put it in my furnace and make glass with it I want more glass so I and I see low-income people uh, well I see them buying stuff that doesn't like boxes of macaroni and cheese boxes of macaroni and cheese are like three dollars now and it would be so much better if they just bought a thing of cheese for two dollars which would be about a half a pound of cheese for two dollars and then bought uh, a bag of macaroni a whole pound of macaroni is only like a buck and then come uh, so for three dollars they could make macaroni and cheese enough to last for oh quite a few meals instead of just one meal for three dollars but that's because it's not because they're stupid or lazy it's because nobody teaches us personal finances I figured this stuff out all on my own the hard way also because I've had um, a different upbringing than most I know how to cook I know how to cook well not just oh like ugh, a roast with potatoes or something like that but I know how to cook like beef wellington so if I'm going to buy a piece of meat, I'm going to buy a good quality piece of meat, not some stringy, tough thing that's full of fat and whatever, and bones. I'm not going to pay money for bones. And I'll bring it home and I'll make something really good, not just some craptacular mess just because I'm really hungry kind of food. Because if I'm going to cook, if I'm going to mess up this kitchen, I'm going to do it for a good reason. You know what I mean? So, plus even my sandwich materials and stuff, seem to be a better caliber than what I see around me even the bread why well, spend two dollars on a loaf of crappy bread when the local grocery has a bakery and makes really good like shepherd's bread and cottage bread and potato bread things with actual nutrients in them you know